So when you need to write the equation of line and you're given the slope as well as the point, what is the best method to be able to use? Either slope intercept form, y equals mx plus b, or using point slope form. And the answer to that question is really a matter of taste. I will say when you're first starting out, remembering y equals mx plus b is going to be a lot easier. However, the process can sometimes be confusing because slope intercept form only deals with the slope and the y intercept. It doesn't have anything for us to be able to plug into the point. So sometimes students will get confused using that method. Whereas when we look at the point slope form, it's pretty obvious like we have a slope and we have a point just plug it in and the other thing I also like about point slope form is when you get into like later classes understanding the point slope form is actually going to be just as useful as well as accepted as using slope intercept form but the problem with point slope form is a lot of times it looks confusing right if you were just to look at these two equations this looks like a lot easier to remember than this let's go ahead and review both of these and then you can kind of make the determination for yourself on what method you would prefer to be able to do so for the first part we have the slope and hopefully at this point you recognize that slope we represent as m right so m equals a five halves. And you notice that in both these equations, we have a point for our m. So that is going to be pretty straightforward. Now, when we're given a point, I think the first thing we always think about a point on a coordinate grid is going to be a x and a y right? Let's go and tackle the slope intercept form. Because when you look at this y equals mx plus b, right? I have y equals mx plus b. Now the y and the x actually represent any x and y coordinates that lie on the graph. m represents the slope, b represents the y intercept. We do not know what b is. That is what we actually need to find. So what we're going to do is we're going to plug in x and y, which represents one point on this line. And we're going to plug in five halves in for the slope. Now, when we do that, the only missing variable we're going to have left is going to be b. So now you can see here, all I simply need to do is just go ahead and simplify this and then go ahead and solve for b. So a five halves times four, right? Now I simply I can rewrite four as four over one. And therefore the two divides into the four two times. Two times five is going to be a 10. So six equals a 10 plus b. And then I can now go ahead and subtract the 10 on both sides. So negative four is equal to a B. Now, again, so that is my Y intercept. And remember when you're writing the equation of the line in slope intercept form, all you need is the slope as well as the Y intercept. We only plugged in X and Y for a tool to help us get to B. But when you're writing that final equation of line, don't plug in anything in for the Y or the X, right? That represents the equation of the line. So we want to keep them as Y's and X's. So therefore you can see that we're going to have an equation of Y equals a five halves X plus a negative four, which again, we could just simplify into a Y equals five halves x minus four. Okay, so now let's get into the point slope form. And I love point slope form because what it does is just gives us a designated spot for us to plug in our x and our y. And you might recognize you say, hey, well, I have two x's and I have two y's. So which one am I plugging it in for? Which can be confusing because in this first example, we plugged in values for our x and y's to solve for b. But in this case, we don't need to do that. We actually already have an x and a y. What we're going to plug our values of four and six in for are going to be an x one and a y one. So whenever you're given a point, a lot of times we want to use a subscript to be able to represent those points. And this is also very helpful when we're using the point slope form when we're given two points. So now I can represent four as x1 and six as a y1. And now let's just go ahead and plug them into the formula. So therefore I get a y minus a y1, which is six, which equals m, which represents my slope. So that's going to be a five halves. And that's going to be times a x minus x1, right? So again, x1 is going to equal a four. Now, a little bit only difficult here is now we actually have to do a little bit of math, right? So I have to apply now to distributive property here. And then I have to add the six over to the other side. Now, again, you only need to do this though, if you need to write it in slope intercept form. Again, this is the equation of a line. It's just in point slope form. But if we wanted to write it in slope intercept form to make sure that it's the exact same as over here, then we would have to do this extra math. So let's go ahead and do that. So we have a y equals five halves times x is going to be a five halves x. Five halves times negative four, we already talked about that, is going to be a negative 10, and that's going to be plus six. And now you can simplify that to a negative four. So therefore we get a y equals a five halves x minus a four, which you can see is the exact same as I had over here. So I think it's helpful to understand both methods. As a math teacher, I would recommend that you understand the point. I, as a math teacher, I'd recommend that you, that you understand both methods. But probably if, if one method you're going to choose, I'm still a little biased to point slope form. But tell me, what do you think? Or what has your teacher taught you? Do you know both methods? Have you tried both of them? Let me know in the comments down below where I actually put these methods into practice. Or if you want more examples or notes that I offer to my students inside my courses, then go and check out the playlist and information I have for you down below. Cheers.